What is up ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's your boy Goblin, and today we're coming in with another hoot and a holler, a banger of a video. Hope you guys enjoyed this one, drop a like if you do, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and also subscribe to my second channel, Goblin420, which is linked at the very top of the description. We got smoking videos, stream highlights, all that stuff on there. Thank you all for watching, and without further ado, let's dive right into the video. So... This one took place fairly recently, around 2019, which I know when I was younger, I used to say that that's not recent, but now that I'm a little older, I mean, two years is kind of recent, you know? But either way, this took place during the summer of 2019. On this particular day, I had gone over to Nathan's house, who was a friend of mine that at the time I hung out with quite a bit because he had a garage that he would always invite people over to. He had some couches in there, he had a TV, he had some lights. It was a nice little smoke spot, you know? Pretty much all of us still lived with our parents at this point, so it was a very clutch place to have, especially because normally his parents didn't care much, unless they were drunk, which on this night they were, but we'll get to that. So, I meet up with Kyle, and him and I go both go over to Nathan's house. Nathan lives like maybe five minutes away from Kyle, so once I drove over to Kyle's, it was just around the corner to get over to Nathan's. And of course, I'm whipping the old Cadillac. You know, if you guys remember the brief period I had that, I had a 1994 Cadillac DeVille. It was so fun to drive. It was such a beater, and I loved it. So I'm whipping the Caddy. We drive the little pimp mobile, the little playa mobile over to Nathan's house and we pull up and we just have a little bit of weed on us and of course a fair amount of blow because at this time in my life, I was at the peak of my cocaine usage. I don't think there was any point in my life beyond summer 2019 where I did anywhere near this much blow. But I didn't have that much with me this day, and it was kind of a bad day, I was already in a bad mood, and I didn't have a ton of money to get more blows, so I just wanted to smoke some weed and chill out with some friends. And maybe take my mind off of that, you know, take my mind off the fiending, but I ended up just fiending more by the time I left. So we get there, and you know, I tap Nathan up, we have a seat, and Nathan's got his table, he's got all the couches and the chairs set up, and we're the only three that are there at this point. We got there around like 7 or 8 p.m., so it was kind of surprising that we were the only ones there, because normally Nathan would have people over every day, and it would always be the widest range of people. Like, half the people he would invite over, I would never know. Like, I'd be meeting new people all the time, and I went to this guy's house. So, on this particular day, it's just us three. So we're sitting there, and we're chilling out for a little bit, and we decide that we want to smoke a little bit. Nathan has some joint paper, so we roll up a tiny little joint, you know, no, nothing too crazy, because we still knew that there were some other people coming. Nathan had told us that he had a couple other people coming, he had Dan coming, who, he's a SoundCloud rapper, he's a, he's a character, and we also have Kendra. Kendra is a flat earther. I think I've talked about this girl in a few past videos, but she is an absolute nutcase. She is, I, I don't know what happened in her life, what sort of like traumatic event, but holy mother of God, her, like, like she is just insane, quite honestly. There, there's nothing short of it. If you invite her to a function, there is no normal conversation. You'll sit down, and you'll spark the blunt and still start talking about crazy conspiracies in the deep state and shit almost every time. It's either A, the deep state, B, the earth is flat, or C, 9-11 was an inside job, or a variant of those. It's some conspiracy every time. Like, yeah, it's okay to believe in conspiracies, but yo, some of the shit she touts is mental and it's hilarious. But on this day, I, I was just trying to smoke, man. I wasn't trying to be convinced that the earth was flat or that we live in a hologram. Like, I just want to get stoned, man. So we're chilling out and eventually Dan shows up. Now, Dan is another character entirely. I've also talked about this guy in a few past videos. This man makes music. I have no problem with people who make music. Chase your dreams. I don't give a shit if it's good or bad. Not my problem. But what I don't like is when people who play music never stop making you listen to it. That is this guy. You will invite him to the function, and he will ask for aux and play exclusively his music. And if you ask to change it or get on aux, he'll be like, yeah, let me just play one more song. And then he'll play six more songs. And then you have to ask again, and it restarts the process. Until eventually, you have to forcibly remove him from aux. So, considering that these two people were the only other people that were going to be attending this smoke session, um... 
I'm surprised I don't have PTSD from this one. But I, I digress. You know, we're, we're a little too early for that. So we're chilling out. We roll up a tiny little joint. You know, we put maybe a gram in it. We had a little bit of weed on us. Kyle and I both had some weed, and we came together, and we we came through with about a quad. So a pretty fair amount of bud, and definitely enough to, enough to get us through the night, as long as a few other people matched. So we're chilling out. We're listening to some music, and, you know, Nathan, he likes to play guitar. So he's playing his guitar in the garage, which is all fine and dandy. You know, he's a good guitar player. So we're chilling out. He's playing his guitar. We're smoking a joint, having a good evening, right? It's off to a nice start. We don't have any liquor. We decide that we probably kind of want some. So we decide to go hop in my car before Dan and Kendra get there and go hit the liquor store, which is just a block away. We whip on over there, us three, and we send Nathan in. And we grab ourselves Nathan's choice. We let him choose because he was the one paying for most of the liquor, right? He said, you know, you guys brought the weed. I'll throw for the liquor. But we let him choose. We left it totally up to him. Uh, What we didn't really understand was that he was going to come out with Bush Light. I don't know why he came out with Bush Light. Like, he doesn't even really drink Bush Light. Uh, Maybe he was just trying to save some money. But he came out with Bush Light. As soon as he came out with that, we were already off to a rough start. A bit of a stumble out the gates, you know? But hey, it's okay. We still got some decent weed. So he hops back in the car with a 30 rack of bush light. And we drive back to his garage. We start drinking a little bit. And we end up playing some King's Corner, right? Now, there's only three of us. So, you know, it's a, it's a little less fun than it would be with a bigger group. But we make it work. And everyone else who's supposed to be there is jagging, right? Dan isn't there yet, and Kendra isn't there yet either. So we finish a whole game. After we finish our game of King's Corner, you know, we're we're feeling a little bit stoned. And right as we're kind of trying to roll up some more, Dan shows up. Now, we're happy at this point. We figured Dan's brought some good weed. We knew he was coming with weed. He told us he was bringing wraps. You know, we're, we're looking forward to this. We're figuring, all right, we got a good smoke sesh tonight. So Dan walks in. He daps us up. And I asked Dan right off the bat, I'm like, yo, what what kind of raps you got? Like, how you trying to roll up? <sighs> Dan committed a cardinal sin. Dan, Dan damn near broke the law on this particular night, honestly. Uh, I, <sighs> This guy pulls out with a straight face, I shit you not. We are all grown men at this point. This man pulls out white grape white owls. I thought he was joking. Like, I looked at him, and I I was like, okay, he's going to pull something else out and start laughing. You know, like, haha, okay, this will be funny, you know? Nope. This guy's dead serious. Now, listen. Anyone who makes music and smokes white owls probably doesn't make good music. So I'm just going to lay that out. Uh, Keep an eye out for those people. And this guy is definitely, he fits right into that category. He busts out the white owls, and I'm a little reluctant, but I'm like, whatever, dude. I'll roll one, you roll one, let's roll up some bud. So he passes me a pack of them, and I start gutting it. He immediately asks for aux, as he always does, and he starts talking about some crazy shit that is definitely not going to happen. I don't know why he does this, but every time this guy comes to the function, he just starts bullshitting. Like, so blatantly, it's unbelievable. He's sitting there, and he's like, yeah, man, working with my team right now. Got a feature with, uh... He, he would always say someone different every time, dude. I don't remember who he said this time. I remember there was a few that came up a lot. Fucking Dave East. Fucking Tory Lane. There was a lot of names he would bring up a lot. I, we're just going to go with Dave East on this particular night. Because I don't remember who it was. But I remember he was talking up some big, big collab he was allegedly going to do. He's like, yeah, man, I got, got Dave East on the line, man. I got Drake on the line, man. We're both lesbians. It's fire. And I'm sitting here and I'm like, dude, like... Okay, you know, cool, like dope. And we're, we're sitting there, and we're, we're kind of trying to be like, okay, cool, man, sounds good. Because, I mean, he came through with some raps, he came through with some weed. But at the same time, he's like the boy who cried wolf with this shit, dude. He says this shit every other week, and the story always changes, and then nothing comes of it. So we don't listen to it. He gets himself on Ox, and he starts playing some music. Which, once again, if you want to show your homies... Uh, well, Alright, I wouldn't really call him my homie, he... I knew him. I knew him. That's about it. He was more Nathan's homie. But listen, if you want to show people your music, that's fine, right? That's cool. But this guy, like I said earlier, will play all of his music on repeat and only his music and refuse to turn it off. So as soon as he gets his first song on, I'm like, oh, fuck, dude, here we go. And I mean, not trying to be rude, but holy shit, it's not good. It's not good. Like, imagine if I got slightly drunk and maybe popped a Zan, 
and I opened GarageBand and hopped on my mic and just started like like saying words and shit. Like, that's pretty much what the final product was here. But he's bumping this shit. And, of course, Nathan's friends with him. So Nathan's gassing him up. He's like, man, this shit's fire. And me and Kyle are sitting here. And I'm looking at Kyle. And I'm like, dude, what is going on, bro? Like, this is ridiculous, right? So, finally, Kendra gets there just as he starts playing his music. So we're like, okay, at least someone else has arrived. You know, like, at least some shit is going down. At this particular point, Nathan was really, really trying to bang Kendra. Like, I'm talking in a super weird way. I don't know if I've discussed this before, but Nathan's an incel. I'm talking, like, full-blown. Like, like baby rage, like, hates women. To, like, if you get him, uh, if you get enough cocaine in this guy's body, he will go on a tangent about how all women are the same and they're just ignoring him because he's nice. And, like, all, like, absolutely insane, dude. I don't know what forums this guy's going on, but they're wacky. So... Finally, Kendra gets there, and she comes in, and Nathan get, gets up, and of course, he, he's the wear my hug guy, you know, he gives her a little hug, and they sit next to each other. Now we've got Kendra here, and she greets Kyle and I, she greets Dan, and now the party started, right? We've got two blunts rolled up, and I realized that I neglected to ask Dan what kind of weed he brought, so I ask him, I'm like, yo, you know, what, what are you matching with? What'd you bring? He throws me the bag, and he says, oh, it's some OG. Now listen... We're past the age where that's an acceptable thing to bring, okay? At this point in our lives, we're 20 years old, okay? Smoking some shit that is just allegedly OG is something we did in high school, all right? Maybe maybe 15 or 16. But we're grown adults, all right? We all have jobs. There is no reason to bring OG to the sesh. It's almost an insult, right? It's... Think of it like this. Imagine it like you're going to a Thanksgiving, a family Thanksgiving, and you bring Kraft Mac and Cheese. You're an asshole. Right? And you should probably get a, a smaller plate than everyone else for that. That's basically what what bringing OG to the sesh is, okay? I'm not talking real OG. I'm talking that quote-unquote OG where homie doesn't know what kind of weed he has, so he just says OG because it's the first thing that comes to mind, right? That's exactly what this pack was because it was mid, your honor. Mid. I'm smelling the bag. I open the little baggie he's got up, and I'm taking a smell of it, and I get this sharp, almost like... Oh, like a chemical scent. It was disgusting. I take a whiff of this shit, and I pass it over to Kyle. And Kyle sniffs this, and he, his face is repulsed. And he looks at Dan, and he's like, Dan, this is dog shit, bud. And Dan's like, what do you mean, man? Hit that shit. It's smoking, bro. That's some stank. And I'm sitting here, and I'm like, okay, dude, we're, we're off to quite the start. You know, this is the only guy who's matching with us. He's got some goddamn pine saw weed. Uh, we're off to quite the start. And now we have the conspiracy theorist, right? Now we have, like, Alex Jones's fucking daughter here, okay? So shit's getting crazy at this sesh. We spark up the first blunt, which is the one that I rolled, which had some pretty decent weed that Kyle and I had brought. We both re-upped off the same guy, Kyle and I, so we both had the same stuff. So, pretty good consistency there, right? So, I'm sparking up, right? We get this blunt going. I'm passing it around a little bit. And as we're smoking this blunt, Kendra asks for the aux. We pass her the controller. It was on a PlayStation that we're playing all the music off of, and we're on the YouTube app. And she stops playing. Listen, she's the only one who could get the controller out of Dan's hands. Dan's a horny little bastard. If any of the boys ask him to stop playing his musical, he'll say one more. If a lady asks him to stop playing his music, he's passing that controller like a frisbee, dude. It's over, bro. He's slingshotting that controller to Shorty. So she gets the controller away from the fucking SoundCloud master. And she decides that the more fitting content to play is she would like to play a video about how God is an alien and how aliens created the planet and really it's just a big simulation. Now listen, I feel like I might get some people riled up in the comments for saying I kind of disagree with this theory, but whatever. But the point of it is, whether I agree with it or not, this is not what I signed up for. This is not what I'm here for. And it's never just watching the video with her. As soon as she puts the video on, she starts asking. She goes, so what do you guys think? How was the Earth made? And I say, I'm like, well, I mean, Big Bang Theory, probably. And she's she just starts going off. She's like, well, how do you know that happened? Were you there? And I'm sitting here, and I'm like, bro, I'm just trying to smoke a little bit of weed. Just to, We haven't even done any coke yet. We have not even touched the blow yet. And this woman's grilling me. This woman's destroying me. I'm sitting here, and my brain is slowly melting. Because the more this blunt gets passed around, the more I realize that I'm not high enough to deal with this shit. 
So I tell Dan to spark up his blunt of OG, and he does. Now, after he sparks this blunt, it gets passed to me pretty soon after, and I take a hit of this shit. Let me tell you, I don't think I've ever hit weed that did this to me. I took a pretty decent sized rip off this blunt, and it it almost tasted like I just like it almost felt like I just got some like like nicotine in my in my gums, you know. You guys ever hit a vape and you get a little bit of juice spat back at you and it makes your your mouth almost like, how do I describe it, like tingle? It gives you that weird feeling, you know? That's what hitting this blunt did. It had such a, like, fucked up, almost chemically taste as if someone just sprayed it with every single sprayable product in their pantry that I couldn't even identify what it tasted like. I just knew it was probably A, frying brain cells, and B, creating a tumor. I wouldn't be surprised if I have a tumor right now from smoking this shit. Who knows? But it was brutal. I take one rip of this shit, and I start coughing a lung up. My face is beat red, and I'm sweating at this point. And I pass this thing to Kyle. I feel bad that I set him up like this because he takes a rip and he, you could tell by his facial expression, his eyebrows go down, he's blown after one hit. I only took like two rips and I passed him. My second one was tiny. You could call it one and a half rips. Kyle literally took one rip. He holds the blunt down. He looks at Dan. He goes, this is fucking awful. <laughs> now, all the while, mind you, Nathan and Kendra are arguing about the earth and how it was created and whether God is an alien. It, it, Feels like I'm having a fever dream. As if things couldn't get any more ridiculous at this sesh. Dan is now requesting the remote back in order to play his own music. Kendra's not folding because she keeps insisting that this video is going to change our minds. This is a fucking 35 minute long video about the earth being made by an alien. I don't give a shit if the earth was made by my mother. I don't give a fuck if it was made by my great-grandpappy. I don't give a shit who made I don't care if Tupac made the earth. Doesn't matter. I'm just here to get stoned. But she didn't care. She didn't give a damn. And it seemed like the higher she got, the dumber the shit she would say would be. There was one point where this mid-blunt was almost out, and she said probably one of my favorite quotables that I still quote with my friends to this day. She says to us, oh, yeah, y'all better, <laughs> y'all better buckle up for this one. She says, how do we know that World War I was the first world war? How do we know that the Neanderthals and the humans didn't have a world war? We knew they fought. Now let, let's just, let's just. Let's just appreciate that one for a minute there. I, I, I'm really glad I got to share that quotable with you guys. Because holy fuck. This woman, I swear to God, you could write a book out of the crazy ass quotables that she would spit out of her fucking mouth, dude. And the higher she got, the more absurd they got, right? So eventually, the second mid-blunt goes out. And I decide at this point, I need some fucking blow. So Nathan passes me the mirror, right? And him and Kendra are still discussing all of this crazy shit about the great Neanderthal world war that allegedly happened, aliens making the planet. They're discussing all of this shit. Kyle and I want no part in this. We're sitting there, and we're just like, fuck, man. Um, that weed hit like shit. My head kind of hurts now, and it almost canceled out the effects of the first blunt we smoked. This is a brutal position. At this point, I would probably rather be in federal penitentiary for an hour than here for 30 minutes. This is brutal. But nevertheless, we persevere. Nathan passes me the little mirror that he had in his garage, and I pour a little bit of coke out on it. And Dan asks for some blow. He asked for just a bump, right? Now, I don't have a ton left at this point, and Dan doesn't have any money to throw, but he offers some weed. I, I hate to break it to him, but I I don't think I would take that weed for free. So I told him, I was like, man, I, I, I just really don't want to smoke any more of that weed. And then Kyle strikes a deal with him. Kyle says, what if Nick gives you a blunt, or not a blunt, pardon me, a bump? in exchange for you not playing any more of your music for the night. 
Now, Dan gets very offended by this, as you could imagine. Of course, he he is not happy about this. He's like, what do you mean, bro? Like, what Like, what are you talking about, man? Y'all are some haters. And Kyle's just arguing with him. He's like, listen, dude, uh, it's okay to like your music and like your own music and support it, but you've been playing your music back to back to back almost all night in between the conspiracy videos, and neither of us can take it for much longer. And I'm not gonna lie, I really appreciated Kyle for laying that out because he read my mind perfectly. So I'm sitting there and I'm like, yeah, dude, um, that sounds like a fair deal to me. And Dan hesitant, hesitantly accepts the deal. Is hesitantly a word? I don't know, bro. Either way, I think it's, I'm fucking baked. Yeah, I took a big dab before this. I'm stoned. Either way. So he agrees to it a bit reluctantly, but he does it. And I give him a bump. I give him a bit of a generous bump because I just want him to stop playing his music. But once I give him this bump, it's like the opposite happened. He starts talking about his music more. He starts showing us how many plays he has on fucking SoundCloud. He starts showing us his Twitter profile. He's like, yeah, man, dude, I, just, I got a lot of followers lately, man. Shit's going crazy, dude. He's showing us all this shit. And once again, it's totally cool to show off. It's totally cool to be proud of your stuff. But it's all this guy does. It is his only personality trait. There is no other discussion to be had with this dude. You could talk about media, television. Somehow, he will bring it back to his music. You could talk about the craziest, most outlandish, irrelevant event that ever happened. We could be talking about Amelia Earhart. And this guy would find a way to mention the fact that Amelia Earhart would have loved to die listening to his music. He always found a fucking way. And after we gave him the blow, there was no exception. He just wouldn't shut up about it. So at this point, Kyle and I are sick of it. The smoke sesh is falling apart, and the icing on the cake is when Nathan's mom comes out. She opens the garage door so aggressively that I got startled. I thought the fucking feds were coming out, dude, even though the actual, like, up and down garage door is wide open and we could see outside. She opens it from the inside, like the door leading into the house. And she's like, Nathan, turn your fucking shit down. You guys are being way too loud out here. And conveniently, she opens the door and my Coke is on the table on the mirror. Now, I'm pretty dead certain she saw it because she looked at it, but she didn't say anything. However, she kept going on about how we need to turn the music down and how loud we're being. So at this point, I'm I'm just blown out of my mind. This entire we would have had a better sesh if we went and just stood in a McDonald's parking lot and smoked, honestly. We would have been much better off than this nightmare sesh. But now Nathan's drunk mom is screaming at all of us, and she's not stopping. She looks at me, Dan, Kyle, and Kendra and tells all of us to shut the hell up or get out. I'm sitting there and I'm like, holy fuck, bro. His mama never even comes out ever. Like, she's normally so cool. I guess she got a few drinks in her, and now she's losing her fucking marbles. So Kevin, or Kyle and I, pardon me, I, I almost used his old story name before you guys uh, met him on that stream that one time. Kyle and I, we get up, and we just fucking dip. We've had enough. We skedaddle. We've heard enough conspiracy theories. We've heard enough of Nathan being really weird around Kendra and kind of horny. And we've also had enough of Dan's music and things that are never going to come to fruition, like his Drake collab or whatever the hell he was talking about. So we got up out of there and left and smoked our weed on our own time. That was honestly probably the worst smoke sesh of my life. And I'm not going to lie. Uh, there was very few times where I assembled with that group of people again afterwards. Because the only time it was fun to be with that group of people is when you were on Molly. Because then it would change entirely, right? Then it's it's now funny that this twacked out conspiracy theorist is rambling about the cavemen wars, right? Now it's hilarious. But when you're not rolling, it's not so funny. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Drop a like if you did. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out, gamers.